Hello everybody, this is the next video in a series of videos on exploratory computing with Python. My name is Mark Bakker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is object-oriented programming. What we've done so far is called functional programming. In functional programming you store data and you write functions that work on the data and you all store them separately. In object-oriented programming you store them all together in what is called a class. Classes are somewhat difficult to explain and maybe the easiest way to do it is just to give you an example and then we'll slowly go through the different features of what a class is. What we're going to do is we're going to write a class for a line segment and the line segment obviously has a beginning point and an end point so it has an xy of the first point and an xy of the second point. The syntax for creating a class is class and then the name of the class. And since we're going to do line segments, we're going to call it line. And it is common in Python to give class names, names that start with a capital. After that, you need a colon and now we're inside the class. The very first function inside a class has a funny name and I'm going to explain later why. It's, uh, it's a function, so it starts with def and the name of the function is underscore underscore init underscore underscore since the function we open the parentheses the first thing we're going to pass it is self and I'll explain what that is later on as well and then I can enter whatever things I want to store for the line and like I said I want to store the beginning and the end point so the, that's called the begin point x1 y1 and the end point x2 y2 and then we have a colon so we now inside this function that's called init and I can already tell you it's going to be an initialization function. It's the function that's called when the class is called. Um, and in that function, we're going to store the beginning and end point. And the syntax for storing the beginning and end point is self.x1 is equal to x1. Self.y1 is equal to y, y1. Self.x2 is equal to x2. And self.y2 is equal to y2. That is the function. Um, the, the only function in the line class so far. If I hit shift enter now, I run this code cell and I have now created a class called line. Now what good is a class called line? Well, if you have a class, you can call the class and when you call the class, you create an instance of a class. And since this is a class with lines, it means you create a line object. That may sound a little magic, but just let's try it line one is equal to a line and the line the line runs from zero zero to four two shift enter we've created now a line and the line is called line one so if i type line one it tells us it's a line instance and it gives us the magical code in memory where this is stored not a very useful thing much more useful would be to ask line one, so do you have any data stored? Um, and it does. And to figure out what that is, you do a line one dot um, x1, for example, and it tells you what the x1 value is and the x2 value, which is more interesting, which is four. Um, in fact, it has stored all the things we have defined right here. And those values, that data that is stored with the class or with the object, are called attributes. To find out all the attributes that are stored with an object, you type line one, the name of the object, dot, and then hit the tab key. Once you hit the tab key, it tells you, ah, these are all the different attributes that are available. For example, line one dot y2. And if I hit shift enter, you'll see that is the value two, and that's the value we have entered. This funny function, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, is called a constructor. It is the function that is called when you call a class and when you create an instance of the class. And the instance of the class is called an object. So the object is an instance of the class. So in this case, the class is called line. And when I've called it, I've created one line object and I've called it line one. I could make a second one. Line 2 is equal to line, say, from 2, 3 to 17, 24. 
and now line two dot x one is equal to two and line two dot y one or x2 which is more interesting is 17. so i have two line objects now one called line one and one called line two with different beginning and end points but you see right away all the data is stored with it um, i can create additional attributes if i want i don't have to just use these i could say i i also want to store the length of it self dot length i can calculate that from the x1 and the y1 values it is the square root of x1 minus self dot x1 minus self dot x2 squared plus self dot y1 minus self dot y2 squared. And since I'm calling the NumPy um, package, I have to import it. Import NumPy snp i can create it now now i have this line one that i've already created and let's make it for the fun of it from zero zero to three four then now this line one dot and i hit the tab key has four attributes and a fifth attribute now called length so if i hit that one i call the length it returns the length and it is five, right? If you have a line of which one side is uh, of a rectangle, one side is three, the other side is four, then the diagonal is five. Um, this line two, when I hit a tab, only has four attributes because I created it with the previous version of this line class. If I want to do uh, also know the length of this one created with this new class, I have to run this code again, shift, enter and if i now do shift line two tab oh i didn't, didn't work let's try it again so i've run line two again and i do now line two dot tab you'll see it also has a length and the length of this one happens to be 25.80 something let's add some additional functionality to the class we've now had a, have a constructor that stores the beginning and the end point calculates the length and also stores that Let's create, let's create a new function that plots the line. And we're going to just call it plot. The very first argument of it has to be self. And then we could, for example, tell what color of line we want to plot. The color is equal to red by default. And if we supply a different keyword, then we can use that one. And we need a colon. So we have a function. Um, and we're going to call the plotting function, plt.plot. And we want to plot it from x1, y1, but to tell it to use the x1, y1 stored with itself, we're going to have to call it self, self.x1, self.x2. Those are the x values we want to plot, and the y values are self.y1, self.y2. So it knows to take the x1 and the y1 of itself. And then we say the color of it is the color is equal to whatever the color is that has been entered. And this is not going to work because we're going to call the plotting package, which is called numpy import matplotlib.py plot as plt. And we want to do matplotlib inline figures. There we go. We run it. So if we create this new line now, let's get rid of all these other ones. So we create this line from 0, 0 to 3, 4. This line 1. Line 1 now has dot tab. Has four, five attributes in a function. When you do the dot tab um, trick or keystrokes, it tells you all the attributes and the functions. It will not tell you which ones are functions and which ones are attributes. You're going to have to figure that out yourself. Uh, but I can do plot. Um, and I open the parenthesis. It tells me what the function is. See, it nicely has recognized what it is. It tells me I can supply the color, but I don't have to. Um, I can close the parenthesis and I hit Shift-Enter and it will nicely plot the line. 
Now notice again how we called this plot function. We gave the name of the object, line one, dot, and then the function name. But if you look in the class, the first argument of plot should be self. By using this syntax, what it automatically does is uses whatever the object name is, um, which is given before the dot, and substitute that in for the self. We don't have to do that. We could be more explicit and type line, the name of the class, dot plot, the name of the function, and then give the name of the object, line one, which is then substituted in for self. And in this case, let's give it the color is equal to green. Um, to show you that it works. This syntax right here is identical to the, gives the identical result as this syntax, but this syntax is much shorter. The dot syntax used here is much more convenient as the one given here. So let's not do this anymore. Let's use the dot syntax. That's what it's made for. Got rid of that one. Um, let's make a couple of lines. We've already made line one. Let's also make line two is equal to line and it goes from 1, uh, 0 to 2, 4. So this is line 2. Um, and then I make a list, line list, of all the lines. So it has line 1 in there and line 2. Not that many. So we have a list now, line list. If I type that out and I hit Shift Enter, if I would have made the name correct, it would have not given you this error. It says name error. Line list is not defined because line list should not have a capital L. This one does exist and it tells me that yeah, it has these two instances. Um, the nice thing now is there's two objects in this class or in this list and I can loop through the list by doing the following. I can say for uh, L in line list. Uh, L dot plot. So what this does is it loops through the line list, which has as first item line one and a second item line two. The first time it's line one and it calls line one dot plot. So it plots line one. The second time through this list, um, this L is equal to line two and it does line two dot plot. So if I hit shift enter, I should get a nice graph with both those lines in there. And it works. Many, many things in Python, if not all of them, are actually objects. You've already used that, um, but because you've used the dot syntax before, but we haven't used it extensively. For example, an array is also an object. If I say x is equal to np dot a range of 12, then x is an array, and if I do x dot tab, you'll find out ah, there's lots of functions and uh, attributes associated with this x because x type x x is a numpy dot nd array that's the name of the object um, and i can change things for example x has a shape and the shape is length 12 so if i type x right x is 0 through 11 but i can even change the shape x dot shape is an attribute shape is an attribute of the x object so i can make it for example four rows and three columns, which is also 12 values. And if I then do X, you see it now has four rows and three columns. So what happens if I give it something that doesn't work, right? I have 12 numbers, say if I say four rows and four columns. Ah, it shows an error, it actually checks for that. Value error, total size of new array must be unchanged. That's correct, a correct error message. I have an array with 12 numbers, I want to make the shape four by four. That's not possible. But next to, so let's give it the right one, 4 comma 3. Um, next to x dot shape, it has other ones. And if you want to know them all, you can, for example, type dear of x. That gives everything that's in x. If I do shift end, and you'll see there is lots of things in there, a lot of an interesting functions. But there's also very cool ones like uh, uh, the mean function or the, mi uh, the min function or the max function or the product function. And you can figure out what all these are and just ask for it. So if you do, there's one called Ravel, if you see it here. So you can do x.ravel, question mark, and it will tell you, oh, this is a function 
um, that flattens the array and it even tells you refer to the numpy.ravel for full documentation. Let's see if that would work. np.ravel. Oh, if I do np.ravel now, it gives us some, adi uh, some additional information that uh, looks a lot more interesting. And what it does is it stretches the 2D array out to one long array. Like I said, all arrays are objects, even figures are objects, or the line in a figure is an object. And we're going to make use of that in coming notebooks where we make animated figures. We might even add some widgets to it. That's all I had for you today. I hope to see you next time.